Welcome back to Science in Real... Monster! Run! <laughs> when we encounter danger, our first instinct as animals is to move. We move to fight or run away and also to find food and shelter. But what do plants do? Boo! Okay, so plants have this dilemma. They're rooted in one place, so they can't depend on movement to deal with life's many challenges. Instead, they use chemistry. Plants have evolved tons of different complex chemicals that allow them to live their best life in one spot. They make chemicals that fight off infection, that glue insect mouths shut, that have beautiful scents and colors to attract pollinators. They even make their own antifreeze in the winter and sunscreen in the summer. And we humans have made the most of this wild and wonderful plant chemistry, using it for spices, dyes, perfumes, and medicine. Speaking of humans, it's time to introduce our super special guest. Mari Irving is a graduate student at the University of California, Santa Barbara, but she started her research journey in college at the University of Central Florida in Chase Mason's Sunflower Lab. There, she studied how sunflowers use chemistry to defend themselves against insect attack. Hey, Mari! Hey, Molly. So, Mari, what special chemicals are sunflowers using to repel insects? They're using a type of chemical called terpenes. Terpenes are involved in things like plant defense and pollinator attraction. They're very aromatic and release into the air super easily. So when you're sniffing a flower, you're actually smelling terpenes. Sunflowers make many hundreds, even thousands of terpenes, but they're also found throughout the plant kingdom. Some really common terpenes are cineol. If you've ever smelled a eucalyptus tree or candle, you're actually smelling cineol. Linalwal is another common sunflower terpene that smells just like Fruit Loops. Wait, that's amazing. I just want to smell a big giant jar of li Linel, linel, how do I say it? <laughs> linel. 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 <laughs> but can you tell me all about your specific research into sunflower terpenes? Sunflowers are an important crop for the food and flower industry, so we really want to know how they defend themselves. We already knew that sunflowers make many different kinds of terpenes, but we didn't know how effective each one was at defending them against insect attack, and we wanted to find out. So this was one major aspect of my research. At the same time, we needed to consider that our planet is warming due to climate change, which is wreaking havoc on all sorts of systems, including plant insect interactions. So we wanted to investigate the effect of temperature on terpene defenses and if terpenes become more or less effective at warmer temperatures. These are such cool questions. I'm so bummed that we cannot be together right now to do some science IRL, but instead, could you maybe give us a virtual tour of your lab and the experiments that you did to find out the answers? Absolutely. The insect we used for this project is Vanessa Cardwai, the painted lady butterfly. This butterfly is found all over the world, eating crops of all sorts, and they are conveniently very easy to grow in lab. We wanted to know the effects of different types and different strengths of terpenes on these insects, as well as how temperature would influence those results. How do you test the effect of terpene on insects? Well, you feed them terpenes and see if they die. I was testing four types of terpenes at 10 different strengths at three different temperatures. When you do research, you need to repeat your experiments many times to make sure your results are consistent. So I did each one 10 times. That means 2,400 samples. So I had to make a ton of terpene food. This involved blending up caterpillar food, which you can buy at the store very conveniently, and then precisely adding the different types and amounts of terpenes to it. Then I measured the effect of terpenes at each stage of Vanessa Cardawai's life, egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, and finally an adult butterfly. At each stage, I counted how many insects didn't make it and counted how many days it took to reach each life stage. Holy cow, that is a ton of work. Whew. But what plant secrets did you uncover? So first, let's talk about the type of terpenes. All four terpenes were good insect repellents and could be the focus of future plant breeding projects. Different terpenes affected insects in different ways, some of them causing skin irritation and some of them affecting the nervous system. So how did strength affect the insects? Well, the more terpenes the insect consumed, the more toxic it was. Some toxic effects showed up at all life stages, while others were specific 
to egg hatching or the chrysalis stage. So now what happens when you increase the temperature? At warming temperatures, terpenes also become more toxic, but insects are also growing and developing faster. So there's going to be a really interesting arms race between plants and insects as climate continues to change. We don't know who's going to win. So we don't know how this will affect ecosystem dynamics, and it raises a lot of really exciting questions that we need to work on in the future. Wow, I'm so glad to hear that scientists like you are doing this important research. And can we just take a second to reiterate that like you did all of this while you were in college? I don't know about you, but when I was applying to college, I had no idea that I would be able to do such high level research there. And it was such a surprise and a delight to realize that these opportunities were available and that I could be an independent researcher in college. Can you talk a little bit about how you got started in research? So when I started college, I had no idea what research was or that you could have a career studying plants and animals and nature. I started out wanting to go to medical school and be a doctor, but I had a passion for plants and nature that I really couldn't ignore. When I was in college, I was really intimidated by professors and grad students doing this super interesting research and didn't really know how to get involved or contribute. But what I found was if you just reach out and let people know how excited you are about the work they do, then chances are they'll be super happy to involve you. I got started in a couple non-plant labs that weren't really great fits for me, but I was so eager to do research that I took every opportunity that I could get. It wasn't until my second year when I joined my school's botanical society chapter and met other plant loving people that I discovered that there is a plant lab at our campus and that I could be a part of it. And it was through that club that I met Chase and got started on this really cool butterfly project. So then I learned about grad school and then you can actually get paid to do research and learn forever. And that's why I wanted to come to UC Santa Barbara and keep studying butterflies and this time include fungus and more secondary metabolites to the agenda. Instead of becoming a medical doctor, I decided to become a plant doctor instead. Well, thank you so much, Mari, for sharing your research and your journey to becoming a scientist. Don't forget to subscribe to Science IRL. And thank you to Prospect Hill Academy for being such a great audience and to the Cambridge Plant and Garden Club and the Roxbury Sunflower Project for making this episode possible. We'll see you next time.